Today, we're covering topics and questions that you guys sent in and suggested. So, stick around. So welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I've been super busy trying to make lures for me. I'm running out of lures, so I'm hustling trying to make some lures. But I've been stacking up some uh, questions from you guys, questions that were asked either on the Engineered Angler Facebook page or on the YouTube channel in the uh, comment section. These are questions that I just can't answer very quickly, and so I leave them for a quick video so I can at least give you some information you can use. So let's get right to it. The first question was about loop knots. I had a question from a viewer that essentially said, are loop knots worth using and when should you use them? And the answer is absolutely, they're worth using, but there's a use for them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a loop knot is essentially a knot that creates a loop that doesn't close, it doesn't cinch down. Let's tie one real quick and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's imagine that this tent stake is actually the uh, nose eye of a lure. My favorite knot to tie is a very simple one. You essentially just tie an overhand knot, put the uh, line through the eye, come through the overhand knot, give it a couple of turns. I prefer three, but this rope is a little thick, so I'm gonna do it only two. As you can see, it has no binding force on the eye. And so as the lure moves, it has a lot more freedom. The other side of that equation is that you have reduced authority over your lure. So there is a specific reason to use this, and I'll explain it in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at this knot I just tied on here. This is a, just a real simple cinch knot. This knot will actually produce a bending movement, or what's called a moment force. And what that does is it actually forces the lure to move in a direction that you're pulling. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about authority over the lure. This allows the lure to do what it wants. So that's what sets the rule. And let me explain to you what the rule of thumb is. So simply put, the rule of thumb is this. If your lure provides its own action, so if it's a crankbait, if it's a topwater that wobbles on its own, it has a big lip on it or something, or it has a big propeller on the back, or you've got a lipless crankbait, or any other bait that actually provides its own movement, like a swim bait, that you don't have to make it do what it's supposed to do. It's just doing it. Those are the lures you want to do a loop knot on. That gives those lures the freedom to act accordingly, right? You don't need authority over their action. On the other hand, any lure that you have to impose that action onto, like a, a walk the dog topwater, or a twitch bait, or a jerk bait, those kind of lures you want a good cinch knot on. You want to be able to grab hold of that front of that lure and turn it as you want to. The other question you might want to ask is, what if I've got a split ring on there? Well, if you've got a split ring on there, my suggestion is take it off. But if you just got to have a split ring, and I have some with split rings, uh, I would suggest you never use a loop knot because a loop knot will slip in between the split ring rings and eventually slip out and you'll end up losing that lure. Okay, so the next question was a question about Alumalite Clear. This is a resin that hardens completely clear and it takes about, uh, about 45 minutes to harden. It's different from most of the resins we use uh, to cast lures because you don't make any effort to control the density by adding micro balloons or anything like that because it'll ruin the clarity, right? You, what you want is a clear lure like this. So here's a lure I made a while back. It's got paint on it. I like to decorate it with some paint, but it is a clear resin. You can kind of see through the belly a little bit. And here's a couple that I just cast just to be able to answer the question that was asked. So the question was, had I ever had any issues with this uh, resin setting up correctly? This subscriber asked Alumalite directly what the shelf life was for this uh, material since they were actually having trouble getting it to set. According to him, they told him, three months. Now I like Alumalite, I like their product, I like their website, I like uh, the, their service, um, but I, I gotta call BS on that. I've had this set right here for well over a year and 
I just cast that lure and two or three other ones and it set up perfectly. So I will say this, if you're using this, read the label because it says clearly on the label that you mix it one to one, A, part eight and B, by weight. They are not the same density. So you'll see that I've been mixing by weight and I've used more of B than of A. So if you're not doing it by weight, you may be having a problem because you're doing it by volume. Okay, another question, and this is associated with knots as well, is knot stacking. Knot stacking is when you take a lure that has a tie on eye that isn't exactly where you want it. And so you want to manipulate this sort of without having to bend this eye. And so what you do is you stack knots onto this eye. You essentially tie a knot, cut it off, tie a knot, cut it off, tie a knot, cut it off until you have enough knots that you're taking up a bunch of space. And in the case of a topwater lure, typically what you're trying to do is lift the head off, especially if that tie on eye is right on the center and not down below the center line. What you want to do is tie on below these knots. That'll give you that leverage from down below the center line of the lure. It'll lift the head up and give you uh, more authority on that walk the dog action. It's a nice trick and you can do the opposite with a popper by tying the knots and leaving them on the bottom and tying off your line on top. That forces that popper down into the water and gives you a bigger, more aggressive pop and a bigger splash. Okay, so the next topic is dressed belly hooks. Now what that refers to is taking hooks that come on your lure uh, that perhaps are attached to the back of the lure, like on a lot of crankbaits and uh, jerkbaits and topwater, you'll find a dressed uh, treble hook like this. This is off a, a um, topwater lure. So since a heavily dressed or even a lightly dressed treble hook will act like a rudder at the back of that lure and inhibit the action, whether it's a uh, walk the dog or a swim action, you really want to consider either taking it off or moving it. Now, on a lure that is sort of marginal as a walk the dog lure, and it tends to just want to sort of glide, then you can try this trick. And that is taking the dressed hook from the back and moving it to the belly hook. What that does is pushes the center of drag forward. And what you want is a center of drag in front of the center of mass. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I did an entire video on weight and balance on top order lures. You should check it out. I'll put the link up here and that'll explain a lot of this. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this was all helpful to you guys. I got a bunch of lures on my cure and rack that I got to see to. So until next time, uh, keep those questions coming. Share the videos with your friends who are interested. And if you haven't subscribed, do me a solid and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next video.